makers of the new Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, the star of the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, a guy named Joe, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Our story opens tonight, not with Amos, nor with Andy, but with one of their friends, George Kingfish Stevens. The scene is in his office at the lodge hall. He's been thinking of how to raise some money to pay some of his personal bills. A stranger is coming into the office. Uh, what can I do for you, miss? Uh, my name is Juliet Williams. Yeah, never heard of you. What you want? Never heard of me? Why, well, I spoke to you this morning on the phone. You got me mixed up with somebody else. Uh, sorry, but, uh... I'm going to have to ask you to get out now because i got a lot of reporting things on my mind. Well, don't you remember? I told you over the phone that I was going to the bank and get the money for you. Look, I ain't got time. Uh, sit down, madam. Sit down. <laughs> well, uh, I hope I ain't got the wrong address. Is this west 135th Street or is this east 135th Street? Well, uh, 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 which, uh, which one was it you wanted? Well, I wanted west of 135th Street. Oh, uh, this is west. The sun sets right on that window there every day. <laughs> oh, well, then. I'm in the right place. Yeah, you will. Oh, well, uh, I guess you're just so busy these days that you forgot about my call. Yeah, that's where the war going on, all of my head jammed up and all that. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, now about the fee I'm to pay you. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, did you say it would be $5 or $10? Uh, $10. I didn't forget that. $10. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the balance of the money I'm going to have to pay you. Mm -hmm. What would you say the whole thing would sum up to? Well, uh, 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 <laughs> it won't be too high, and of course, it won't be too low, sort of in that neighborhood someplace. Uh, well, uh, I figured it'd be $50. Uh, you hit the right neighborhood. Oh, right. uh, well, that would leave a $40 balance. Now, when do I have to pay you this? Well, right now would be good. Well, I'm certainly not going to pay the balance until you show me some results. Mm -hmm. Now, just exactly what is this $50 going to include? Well, <coughs> uh, 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 tell me what you think that it ought to include. I won't be fair about the thing, you know. Oh, well, my cousin came to one of these matrimonial agencies once. Uh, oh, uh, a matrimonial agency, huh? Uh, she did, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, my cousin said that the $10 deposit covered the introduction to the man, and she paid the balance of the $40 after the wedding. A uh, wedding? Uh, oh, you want to get married, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, in other words, uh, if I find you a husband, I get the other $40. That's right. Uh, now, tell me, do you have any legible bachelors in mind that's my type? <laughs> mm, uh, let me think here a second. Uh, I want to kind of go over the list. I got in mind here. Uh, you want a single man, don't you? <laughs> uh, I want a man a little older than myself that would make a good husband. Mm, a good husband. Uh, madam, I think I got just a man for you. Oh, uh, well, what's his name? His name is uh, uh, Andrew Hogg Brown. Well, uh, is he the marrying type? Well, uh, he's been kind of null and void in the idea, uh, kind of skirting around the edge a little. But don't worry, the Stevens Matrimonial Bureau has always got ways of outskirting them fellas. Yes. Yeah, we'll be able to swing him around, all right, so don't worry. Lady, we always lands our man. Well, that's very encouraging. I, I tell you what you do. I want you to come back here at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Now, look here. You pretend that you're going to be my new secretary. I'll have the man here, and in that way, you see, I'll give you what we call a preview of him. Okay. I'll be here at 4.30 tomorrow. Oh, and another thing. Uh, let me warn you that when you see him, uh, you have got to make up your mind fast if he wants a husband. Because bachelors is going like hotcakes these days. I just can't keep them in stock. <laughs> Uh, Amos, the reason I dropped over here to your flat to see you about the thing uh, that I request with you over the phone about, you see. Oh, yeah. I, I tell you, I think that our friend Andy ought to get married. 
Well, you know, uh, King Fee, since you talked to me about it, me and Ruby has been thinking it over. We both feel that it would be a good thing if Anne would get married and settle down. Well, now look here, Amos. All of his friends is married. And why can't Andy be in the same mess? I mean, the same happiness that they are. <laughs> yeah, it would be good for him, all right. Well, now, listen, Amos. You is his closest friend. Why don't you have a heart-to-heart talk with him? It's for his own good. All right, Kingfish, I'll talk to him about it. But, Amos, what business has I got to take on the responsibilities of a wife? Well, Andy, it ain't only the responsibilities. There's a lot more to it than that. It's companionship and sociability. Cheers, huh? Yeah, after all, uh, what do you do with yourself? For instance, in the evening, you go over to the pool room by yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but if you was a married man, you'd go out with your wife. Yeah, but how does I know I'm going to marry a gal that can shoot pool? <laughs> I just don't understand you, Andy. You always think of marriage like you were stepping off a high cliff. Marriage makes life easy for you. A wife takes care of you. She keeps a nice house for you. She waits on you when you were sick, and she cheers you up when you was down in the dumps. Yeah, but when does that fur coat stuff begin? <laughs> oh, Andy, all wives ain't that way. I've been married to Ruby for years, and I ain't had to buy her a fur coat yet. Well, you just got a break. Be just my luck to marry the coldest gal in Harlem. <laughs> I still think being single is the best. No, Andy, married life is the only thing. Listen, Amos, a wife is all right for a married man, but not for me. <laughs> well, I got your message yesterday to come over here, Kingfish. What you want to see me about? Is you got a new business? Oh, uh, Brother Andy, I got a little something I'm uh, working on. Oh, you is, huh? Any chance of me getting in on it, partner dear? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, Andy, I see there's a very good chance of you getting in on it. Uh, but not to change the subject, it just occurred to me here, Andy, is you ever thought of getting married? Sure, I thought of it. That's why I never got married. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Amos asked me that same question this morning. What is this, marriage week? No, no, no. I, I guess your friends has just got you on the mind, you know, trying to help you. We hate to see you ruining your life as a bachelor. Yeah, well, forget it. Because even if I did want to get married, I ain't got no gal to marry. Oh, there must be somebody that you can marry. Uh, let's think a second. Let's pick a name out of the thin air. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, here's a name floating around in the thin air already. Yes, huh? Yeah, the name is Juliet Williams. Just hit me in the head. <laughs> yeah, the girl is going to be my new secretary. Oh, I didn't know you was going to get a secretary. Anyway, I don't want to get married, no how. Oh, maybe I had no business mentioning Miss Williams' name in the first place. Yeah. The reason that she is going to work here for me is just to, well, give her something to do during the day, you see. Mm. No, she wouldn't be right. A marriage never works out right when a wife has got a lot of money of her own. No, marriage never... Uh, uh, what is that? <laughs> I say it wouldn't work out, and uh, uh, let's change the subject. Well, uh, as long as we're on the subject, there ain't no use in going to all the trouble of changing. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't be interested in her. Why would you want to marry a girl like her with a lot of money? Well... Oh, that would be awful, and to marry a woman with a lot of dough? Yeah, she's going to be too proud to let her husband work. You couldn't stand that, Andy. <laughs> well, I can force myself, maybe. <laughs> Oh, you'd be married to a woman there. She'd go out and buy everything you need for the house, always buying your clothes, automobiles. You don't want that. <laughs> no, I tell you, and uh, Oh, come in, Miss Williams, come in. Oh, hi, Mr. Stevens. Uh, uh, Andy, this is my secretary, Miss Williams. Hello. <laughs> uh, it's uh, so nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. Here, take this chair. This is a nice, soft one. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's a little warm in here. Wouldn't you like to take off your pocketbook? I mean, uh, your coat. Uh, I wonder if you folks would excuse me. Uh, I got some things to tend to. I'll be back. Yeah, go right ahead, Kingfish. Uh, excuse me, Miss Williams. Uh, 
You mind if I skip right over to Juliet stuff and call you honey? Well, uh, I don't know you very well, but I suppose it'd be all right. And uh, would you mind if I skip right over to Ain't You Cute stuff and told you that I was crazy about you? Oh, that show sure sound nice, all right. But I hardly know you, Mr. Brown. Tell me, y'all, uh, what business you're in. Uh, well, let's skip that, too. <laughs> uh, listen, honey, uh, what is you doing this afternoon? Oh, I ain't got no plans at all. Oh, boy, that's swell. Look, it's such a beautiful day out. Let's me and you take a walk together and drop into your bank and meet some of the fellas. <laughs> What's the matter, Andy? Oh, it's just no use, Amos. I spent the whole afternoon and evening with that gal, Juliet, and when it was all over, I knowed I couldn't marry her. Yeah, well, what happened to change your mind? Well, just between the two of us, Amos, sometimes I lose confidence in myself, you know what? One time I think, yeah, I will get married, and the next time, no. Uh Uh-huh. Every time I think about it, my head starts swimming round. You know, you ought to go to see some doctor that does just that kind of thing with your head. Hmm, what kind of doctor is that? I think they call him a psy... a psy... psy... psychiatrist. Or something like that. Yeah, but where could I find one of them... for psy or Well, there ought to be a lot of them in the city. I, I tell you what, maybe we could find one here in the classified telephone book. I don't know how to spell it, though. Well, look under the S's. You're bound to hit it there. As we join the boys now, we find Andy just entering the office of a psychiatrist. Mr. Brown, Dr. Barrymore is ready to see you. Oh, uh, he is, huh? Uh, uh, but, but, but I can come back some other time if he visits. Oh, no. Please come in now, Mr. Brown. Step this way. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, come in, Mr. Brown. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you, you want me to take off my shirt? No, there'll be no need for that. I don't examine the body. I examine the mind. Oh, Well, then I'll just take off my hat. (laughs) Sit down, sit down. Uh, Tell me, Mr. Brown, is this your first visit to a psychiatrist? Uh, yes, sir. Well, then, you may or may not know just what psychiatry is. It's a method of analyzing the content and mechanism of a person's mental life for the purpose of psychotherapy. Oh, yeah, yeah, sir. That's what I figured it was, yeah. (laughs) Uh, What is your mental trouble, Mr. Brown? Uh, well, sir, uh, close as I can figure the thing out, it might be that I is getting scared of uh, getting married. Ah, that makes it pretty obvious, then, that you have a fear of the opposite sex. Mm. But, of course, we must find the cause before we can find the cure. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Now, a phobia such as yours, a fear of women, very often dates back to childhood. Oh, no, sir, doctor, you're on the wrong track there. I never run around with women when I was a child. <laughs> I didn't mean that. What I am trying to find out is, were you interested in any little girls when you were, say, five or six years old? Five or six? Uh, yes, sir, there was one. Pretty little girl, too, had pigtails on her head. <laughs> now we're getting someplace. Uh, do you remember the little girl's name? Uh, no, sir. You see, I didn't start carrying no address book till I was nine. (laughs) Well, tell me more about this little girl. Well, uh, of course, that was a long time ago, and I don't remember too much about it. When you used to meet her and see her, do you remember if you were calm, or were you shy and bashful? Or or, or did you tremble in her presence? Well, it seems to me I'd done a little shaking. Now, tell me, were you in love with this little girl? Me? In love with that little squirt? (laughs) (laughs) A little. (laughs) I'll make a note of that. Uh, Well, uh, Doctor, uh, this seemed kind of silly, though, talking about when I was a kid, and besides that, it was kind of embarrassing. 
Mr. Brown, the practice of psychiatry often seems silly to the layman, but it's these little things that date way back that often have a bearing on their current problems. Now, you take my own case, for instance. Mm. At one time, I was a very nervous, excitable person. The least thing set me off. Yeah. I went to another psychiatrist to find out the reason for it. Mm. I myself was asked seemingly ridiculous questions, but we discovered that, like, in 90% of all mental disturbances, it dated back to my childhood. Mm. Yes, it, it all had to do with the grammar school teacher who disliked me intensely. Oh, sure enough? Yeah. But now, since I know what the cause of the trouble was, I'm a different man. Yes, sir. I'm calm and placid. Mm. I don't get excited anymore. I'm always able to control myself. So you see, Mr. Brown... Mr. Clinton's on the phone. Well, you didn't tell him I was here, did you? Yes, I did. Of all the stupid things I ever... <laughs> But, Doctor... Don't talk to me! There are a few things I wish you'd get through that thick skull of yours. But what will I tell him? Tell him what I told you to! Get out of here! Uh, how long has you been cured, Doctor? You know, I almost got excited just then. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so you, you come close to it, all right. <laughs> but now, uh, let's get back to your case. Another method we use to analyze mental conflicts is through the interpretation of your dreams. Mm. There we delve into the subconscious. Tell me, do you ever dream? Oh, uh, once in a while. Mostly at night. Mm. <laughs> well, for instance, uh, what did you dream last night? Oh, uh, last night. Let me see. Uh, last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. Uh, I dreamed that I met a good-looking gal, and I took her out walking. Oh, she was swell. She told me she was crazy about me, and she wanted me to buy her a diamond wristwatch. Did you buy it for her? Oh, sure. I go hog wild in my dreams. <laughs> I'm very familiar with the character of that type of dream. Mr. Brown, from what you told me, the thing that's troubling you is very obvious. Yes. You have what we call an economic psychosis. Mm. Everything you do or say is motivated by the thought of the almighty dollar, mm. e even marriage. Mm. The one thing that's kept you from becoming a married man is the fear, not of a woman worming her way into your affections, but of her worming her way into your wallet. Mm. Mr. Brown, don't waste your life. <laughs> You find some nice girl and get married. Yes, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. I appreciate this advice, and I'll be running along right now. All right. All right. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. And I hope you take my advice. Ah. Forget the extra money that a wife might cost you. Forget about this money psychosis. Money isn't everything, you know. It's nothing. Uh, that door right there, Mr. Brown. Yeah. And on the way out, you can pay the nurse. Uh, pay? Uh, but, Doctor, how about this money psychosis? That will leave you as soon as you give the nurse the five dollars. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Juliet, my darling, how do it feel to be engaged and have a marriage license already? Oh, Andy, dear, I'm so thrilled, I don't know what to say. To think that we's going to get married. Yes, honey. And we're going to be the happiest little couple in Harlem. Tomorrow we'll go out to the real estate office and see if we can't find ourselves a furnished love net. This show is going to be a surprise to everybody. Even Mr. Stephen the King Fish don't know we're going to get married, does he? No, no. I ain't told a soul. The King Fish don't know nothing about it. And he has done asked us to come up to his house tonight. Maybe we'll tell him then. Oh, uh, listen now, honey. Uh, just take it easy. Now, Andy and Juliet is going to be here in a minute. Uh, is you got everything straight? 
Well, all I know, George, is what you done explained to me. Me and you is supposed to act like the happiest married couple in Harlem. Yeah, that's right. Now, now you got it now. You see, honey, uh, the reason is, uh, Andy, I got to explain this to you so you, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy ain't quite made up his mind yet. All he needs, and oh, I know the boy well, you know, all he needs is just a little more convincing, and then he'll propose marriage to this gal. Oh, yeah. And you think that by having Andy and the gal here tonight, that that's going to do the trick. Oh, yeah. Ain't no two ways about it. And another thing, this is our only chance to get the $40 balance from the gal. If I can just get Andy to prepose to her and marry her, we gets the 40 smackers. Now, all he got to do is to see the beauties of married life, honey, at home. Say, maybe that's them now. Yeah, now, 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 don't forget, honey. Be sweet to me, and I'll be sweet to you right back. Okay, George. Well, hello there, Juliet. Hello there, brother Andy. Come uh, in. Hello, Kingfish. Hi there. Hi. Well, even Mr. Stevens. Well, uh, Sapphire, uh, sweetheart, the, the guest has arrived. Oh, has the angel? Oh, uh, yes, he is, darling. <laughs> well, hello, Sapphire. Hello, Andy. Uh, darling dear, uh, this is Juliet Williams. I'm pleased to meet you. Same to you. George, darling, has done told me all about you. Uh, everything's going all right here, Aunt Kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Me and the little woman here is just up to our ears in love and affection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Brother Andy, this is married life for you. Sure is. Let's all go in the parlor. Uh, yes, honey, come on, right this way, folks. Uh, Angel, darling, uh, will you bring that big comfortable chair over in this part of the room for Andy? Yes, dear. Uh, uh, Sapphire, can I help you there, sir? No, thank you, Andy. George, what's the matter with you helping? Well, uh, uh, look now, honey, all I have to do is to move the chair over here. I don't want no back talk from you, though. I just... <laughs> well, well, why don't you help him, Mr. Stevens? Uh, Kingfish, I want to tell you something. Me and Juliet has got a big surprise for you. Yeah, well, I'd like to hear that. Uh, tell me about it, brother. Yeah, what is it? Where is that thing? Where? Oh, here, here. Look at there, folks. Look at there. A marriage license. A marriage license? Yes, sir. Uh, me and Annie's going to get married tomorrow. Ain't it wonderful? Well, well, well. Congratulations, yeah. congratulations. Put oh, it there. Yes, oh, yes. I'm so happy for both of y'all. Congratulations. Oh, Andy, you has made me the happiest man in the world. Oh, uh, honey, will you please bring that big comfortable chair over here for Andy and his bride? What's the reason you can't do it? Well, now, listen, I don't ask you to do it, and I don't want no back talk. <laughs> bring the chair over here, sweetheart. <laughs> Look here, you lazy good-for-nothing bum. Bring it over yourself. I agree with you, Miss Stevens. A husband ought to do them things. Hold it, hold it right there, honey, hold it. <laughs> Wait a minute. That is strictly a wife's work. Now, is these the things you expect me to do, Andy, when we's married? Listen here. My understanding of married life is that the wife is supposed to love, honor, and do the heavy lifting. <laughs> well, if that's what you think, well, now, I'm... Wait, wait, wait just a minute. Now, wait, everybody calm down. Here. Let everybody just kind of take it easy, folks. I just can't afford to have nothing to happen to this wedding. If you expect me to do the work around our love nest, Andrew Hogg Brown, I wouldn't marry you if you're the last man on earth. Ah, that last remark settles it. I don't want to marry you now. I don't want to marry you neither. Well, now, wait just, wait, wait just a minute, folks. Listen, you can't do this to me. Mrs. Stevens, you can keep the $10 deposit. This is the last time I'll ever try to get a husband through a matrimonial agent. Hey, what do all this mean? Well, it means that I was paying Mr. Stevens $50 to get me a husband. Oh, uh, you, you, wait, wait, wait. Now, now, now wait yeah. a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Now, wait a minute yourself. Now, wait, look here. Yeah, now, well, that's great. That now, wait, 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 just a minute. Wait a minute wait, yourself. Wait, just, let me explain well, it. Now, let me explain it to you. You, you see, yeah, Andy? Now, I, I know I ain't going to marry her now. Now, don't Look, look here. You, you see, Andy, uh, she give me $10 already. But believe me, Andy, I was only doing the whole thing for your happiness, yeah. not for the $40 balance. Oh, that's great. Now, I know I ain't going to marry her at all. And I feel that? the same way about it, too. Oh, Andy, look here. Are you sure you don't want to try it? I'll split the $40 with you. <laughs> George, why don't you mind your own business? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, everybody here. Let me tell Juliet something here. Andy, you keep your big mouth shut. You ain't nothing but a big bum. And I'm going to get out of here right now, and I never want to see you again. You can't get out of here too quick for me. And in case you don't know where the door is, come on. I'll open it for you. You don't have to open it for me. I've been open for you. 
Listen to them fight. Boy, listen to that. Yeah, the way they is going out, they would have made an ideal married couple. <laughs> Join us again next week at this same time for the Amos and Andy Show, at which time Amos and Andy will have as their guest the motion picture comedian, Miss Spring Byington. Our program is shortwave to our armed forces overseas, wherever they may be. We want to thank Lionel Barrymore for appearing with us tonight. Mr. Barrymore may be heard in his own radio program, The Mayor of the Town, over another network on each Wednesday evening for Rinso. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for all of us and bidding all of you a pleasant good night. Good night.